The earth we inhabit is a marvel of contrasts, its surface adorned with shimmering oceans, rivers carving through landscapes, and ice caps glistening under the polar skies. Yet beneath this familiar veneer lies a realm of profound mystery, vast reservoirs of water entombed within the planet's rocky interior. These hidden oceans, concealed hundreds of kilometers below the crust, are not the liquid expanses of lore, but water locked in mineral structures, revealed only through the ingenuity of modern science. Their discovery challenges long-held assumptions about Earth's water distribution, its geological machinery, and the very origins of life. This video embarks on a journey into these subterranean depths, exploring their nature, the science behind their unveiling, their staggering scale, and their implications for humanity's understanding of our planet and beyond. The idea that Earth harbours water deep within its bowels is not entirely novel. Geologists have long speculated about minor hydration in the mantle rocks. However, the scale of these reservoirs emerged with striking clarity in recent decades, thanks to cutting-edge geophysical research. A pivotal moment came in 2014, when Steve Jacobson's team at Northwestern University published a study in science that rocked the scientific community. Using seismic data from over 500 earthquakes, they detected a slowdown in wave velocities through the transition zone, a layer spanning 410 to 660 kilometers beneath the surface, suggesting the presence of water-laden minerals. Their breakthrough hinged on ring woodite, a high pressure mineral formed in the mantle's intense conditions. Laboratory experiments had already shown ring woodite could incorporate water as hydroxyl groups within its crystal lattice, but proof came from a serendipitous find, a diamond spat out by a volcano containing a speck of ring woodite with 1.5% water by weight. This tiny sample, analysed with infrared spectroscopy, implied that the transition zone might hold water, equivalent to three times the volume of Earth's surface oceans, over four billion cubic kilometres. Jacobson likened it to a sponge soaking up water across vast swathes of the planet's interior. Subsequent studies bolstered this claim. In 2021, researchers using advanced seismic tomography identified similar anomalies in the lower mantle, hinting at water in minerals like brigdomite and post pervoscite. Projects like the US Array, part of Artscope, mapped these zones with unprecedented detail, while diamonds from Brazil and Botswana offered further clues some bearing inclusions with up to 2% water. These findings, pieced together from indirect evidence, paint a picture of an Earth far wetter than its surface suggests, with hidden oceans rewriting the planetary water narrative. To envision these subterranean oceans, one must abandon images of rippling waves or tranquil lakes. This water exists not as a liquid but as a molecular prisoner, bound within the crystalline frameworks of minerals under conditions alien to the surface world. At depths of 400 kilometers or more, temperatures soar past 1000 degrees Celsius, and pressures reach millions of atmospheres, enough to crush steel like paper. Here, water molecules disassociate into hydrogen and oxygen, integrating into minerals like ringwoodite, wadsalite, and brigmentite as stable hydroxyl components. 
Ringwoodite, for instance, is a marvel of nature's engineering. Formed from olivine under high pressure, its structure allows it to store water to 2 to 3% of its weight, far more than most surface rocks. Wadsleyite, prevalent in the upper transition zone, boasts similar properties, while Brigmentite, dominant in the lower mantle, may hold less water per unit but compensates with its sheer abundance. This water isn't static. It participates in a slow, majestic cycle. Subduction zones drag hydrated oceanic crust into the mantle, releasing water into surrounding rocks, while volcanic eruptions and mid-ocean ridge degassing return traces of it to the surface as vapour a process spanning tens of millions of years. The scale of these reservoirs defies comprehension. If the transition zone's water content is as high as estimated, it could total over 1.4 billion cubic kilometres, three times the surface ocean's 1.38 billion cubic kilometres. Add potential reserves in the lower mantle and the Earth's total water might be 5 to 10 times greater than previously thought. This isn't a uniform ocean, but a patchwork of hydrated zones, varying by depth and region, yet collectively forming a subterranean hydrosphere that rivals anything on the surface. The question of whether life could have originated in the hidden oceans beneath the Earth's surface is a fascinating one, pushing the boundaries of biology, chemistry and geology. While the traditional view centres on surface oceans as the cradle of life, the discovery of vast water reservoirs locked in the mantle, particularly in the transition zone, below the crust offers a provocative alternative. At first glance, the environment seems hostile to life as we know it, far hotter and more crushing than the boiling vents of the deep sea or the acidic pools of Yellowstone. Organic molecules, the building blocks of life, typically break down under such heat and pressure, suggesting that life couldn't form or survive there in its current state. However, as mentioned, these reservoirs aren't static. Water cycles between the surface and the deep earth via subduction and volcanic activity over millions of years. This raises the possibility that, billions of years ago, water and chemicals from the mantle could have reached shallower, less extreme zones, perhaps near subduction zones or proto-hydrothermal vents, where conditions were more conductive to life's chemistry. The mantle's water might have acted as a reservoir, feeding materials upwards to spark prebiotic reactions. Life's origin likely required a primordial soup, a mix of water, organic compounds and energy to drive chemical reactions. Surface oceans offered sunlight and lightning, but the deep earth provides alternative ingredients. Mantle rocks like olivine which transforms into ringwoodite, are rich in metals such as iron and magnesium, which can catalyse reactions. When water interacts with these minerals under high pressure, it forms hydrogen gas, a key energy source for early life, as seen in modern microbes at hydrothermal vents. Studies of vent systems like those at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge show that hydrogen and methane produced when seawater reacts with mantle-derived rocks fuel complex organic synthesis. In 2019, experiments at the University of Strasbourg simulated mantle conditions, combining water, carbon dioxide and iron-rich min minerals at 200 to 300 degrees Celsius and high pressure. They produced amino acids, life's building blocks, suggesting that similar processes could have occurred in or near the Earth's early mantle. If water from the hidden oceans cycled upwards 4 billion years ago, 
it might have carried these precursors to shallow subsurface environments where temperatures dropped below 100 degrees Celsius, allowing molecules to stabilize. The deep earth hypothesis doesn't require life to begin in the transition zone itself, but posits it is a contributor to surface or near surface origins. During Earth's Hadean period, 4.5 to 4 billion years ago, the planet was molten chaos, bombarded by meteorites and lacking any stable oceans. Water trapped in the mantle, delivered by primordial accretion or early subduction, could have outgassed true volcanoes, forming transient pools or subsequent aquifers. These settings, shielded from cosmic radiation, might have been ideal for concentrating organic molecules. The deep hot biosphere concept, championed by Thomas Gould, suggests life could have started kilometers underground, where heat and minerals abound. Modern extremophiles, such as bacteria thriving in the Earth's crust at 121 degrees Celsius, hint at this resilience. If mantle water seeded such zones with hydrogen, carbon and nitrogen, it could have kick-started metabolism first scenarios where energy cycles preceded cells. Over time, as the earth cooled and the oceans stabilized, this proto-life might have migrated upwards, adapting to surface conditions. Evidence of this is circumstantial but compelling. Ancient zircon crystals from Western Australia, dated to 4.4 billion years, contained oxygen isotopes suggesting interaction with liquid water, possibly mantle-derived, when Earth's surface was still molten. Rocks from Greenland, 3.8 billion years old, bear chemical signatures of mantle influence, hinting at deep water's role in early hydrology. Hydrothermal vent microbes, reliant on mantle source chemicals, offer a living analog, bridging the deep earth to biology. Yet, challenges abound. The extreme conditions of the transition zone likely preclude active life formation there today, and we lack direct samples from such depths, relying on diamonds and seismic data. The timing is tricky. If mantle water only reached viable zones after surface oceans formed, it might have been too late to be their sole origin. Competing theories such as panspermia, which is life that came from space, or surface hydrothermal pools have stronger experimental backing, like the Miller-Urey synthesis of amino acids from lightning-charged gases. So. Could life have begun in these hidden oceans? Not directly within their current depths, given the hostile conditions, but plausibly through their influence. The mantle's water cycling upward in Earth's infancy could have supplied the raw materials, hydrogen, metals and heat to subsurface cradles where prebiotic chemistry flourished. It might have been the catalyst, but not the cauldron complementing Earth's surface processes. Imagine a young Earth where volcanic fissures leaked mantle water, mixing with carbon-rich, crushed to brew life's first sparks, a partnership between hidden depths and nascent seas. This hypothesis remains speculative, awaiting deeper exploration. Future missions drilling into the Earth's crust or lab simulations of Hadean mantle conditions could test it. For now, the hidden oceans stand as a tantalizing possibility, an unseen player in life's grand debut, whispering that our origins might lie not just in the blue above, but in the dark below. So, where did this deep water come from? Two competing theories vie for dominance. The primordial hypothesis argues it's a relic of Earth's birth, 4.54 billion years ago. As the planet accreted from the solar nebula, water-rich planetismals, possibly from the wetter outer solar system, 
delivered hydrogen and oxygen, which became trapped as the molten earth cooled and differentiated. Evidence lies in certain meteorites which contain up to 20% water, suggesting a wet infancy for our world. Alternatively, the subduction model posits a continuous influx over eons. Oceanic plates soaked with seawater sink into the mantle at rates of centimetres per year, ferrying water downward. Studies of subduction zones like the Mariana Trench show hydrated minerals persisting to depths of 700 kilometres, releasing water into the transition zone. Isotope ratios of mantle-derived rocks, such as high deuterium levels, support this recycling narrative, employing a dynamic balance between surface and deep reservoirs. Geologically, this water is a linchpin. It lowers mantle rock's melting point, enabling partial melting that fuels volcanism and plate tectonics. Without it, Earth might resemble a stagnant Venus its plates locked, its surface unchanging. Water also softens the mantle, easing convection currents that vent core heat. Experiments at facilities like the Advanced Photon Source simulate these effects, showing hydrated rocks melt at 100 to 200 degrees Celsius, lower temperatures than the dry ones. Thus, these hidden oceans are not mere curiosities, they're the engine of the Earth's restless geology. Probing these depths is daunting. The Kola Superdeep Borehole, humanity's deepest at 12.3 kilometers, barely scratches the crust, while the transition zone lies 30 times deeper. Direct sampling is a fantasy. Instead, scientists wheel seismic arrays like the Global Seismographic Network to map wave anomalies. Diamonds, nature's couriers from the mantle, offer rare glimpses, each inclusion a time capsule. High pressure labs using diamond anvil cells replicate mantle conditions, squeezing minerals to 25 gigapascals to test water capacity. Future strides hinge on technology. Next generation seismic grids could pinpoint hydrated zones with meter scale precision, while space based gravimetry like NASA's GRACE might detect mass shifts tied to the water. Planetary comparisons, say, via Mars's Perseverance rover, could contextualize Earth's uniqueness. Practically tapping these reserves is a pipe dream. Extracting bound water at such depths would demand energy far exceeding today's capabilities. Their true yield is intellectual, illuminating Earth's past and guiding resource strategies as surface water dwindles. Earth's hidden oceans are a revelation, an unseen hydrosphere dwarfing the seas we sail. Locked in minerals, they whisper of a planet wetter and more dynamic than imagined driving tectonics, hinting at life's dawn, and reframing cosmic exploration. Unveiled by seismic echoes and diamond flecks, they defy our surface-centric view, urging us to peer inward. As tools sharpen and questions multiply, these subterranean waters promise not just answers, but a deeper connection to the restless, water-soaked world beneath our feet. A legacy of Earth's birth, a key to its present, and a beacon for its future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.